بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين. The first of all I have to step one step behind the sheep because I am not really busy. خير المرء من عرف قدر نفسه. جزاك الله خير. اللهم افتح اللهم اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. امين امين. يا رب اللهم اهدني فان من هديت لا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا ولا مرشدا. امين يا رب. We're going to make it a social talk today so we're going to really participate in all of, well, all of us. Okay, so I want to make it sure that we're going to be an interactive talk. I'm not going to be just the lecturer or the speaker. So I want to, you know, have everybody to participate. Yeah. Just so nobody will fall to sleep, nobody will doze off, you know, and nobody will get bored or stuff like that. So anyway, I'm going to start my talk today by making a poll. Okay, I'm going to ask a question and I want to see the answers by show of hands. Okay? And please, everybody will participate. So my first question is, who likes to be strong? Strong not in the sense of physical. bodily strong or physical strong. It could be also this one, but I want to make sure that it's really spiritually strong. Okay, Strong in his prestige, strong in, among his family, strong among his work, you know. Be decisive. Be, you know, active and stuff like that. So show, show of hands, please. Let's see, let's see, everybody, everybody, your hand up. So that that is fine, you know. Uh, somebody showed his both hands, which is really, really keen to be that. Okay, okay that's, that would be fine. And in the meantime, by being strong, who would like to be, assume that you are a really strong man, okay, Rabbina, God give you the strengths you are really looking for. Who also would like to be a recognized truth and you would be cheering for al haqq wal adl? Who would like to be trustworthy and always support the truth and al adl? Well, I see people don't really care. I mean, we're just we're not really living in this life just to eat and sleep and just you know, have kids and stuff like that. That's fine. Okay. 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 That's what I meant. I mean, strong. It doesn't have to be physically strong. You don't really have to be built up and muscles and stuff like that. But I want to be swift. I want to be decisive. I want to be taking action. And I want to see, you know, you're strength, you're strong. When you see something wrong, you're trying to rectify it. That's the strength I really mean. So now we talked about strengths. We talked about truth and justice. Okay. And who wants to be just in his decision? With among, among all of the other people, to be just, to be fair, not to oppress anybody, whether he is a king or whether he is a slave or whether he is, hope, you know, uh, whatever he is. Okay. So, so I think I think those are three three good characters. You know, everybody is dreaming of. Okay. But do you really think that you can possess all those three things in the same time? You can be strong. Can be just, okay, and you can be supporting al haq al haq the truth. It's very difficult. It's very difficult to be this. Just look, let's look at our life right now, okay. The strong really dictates all his orders and rules. Everything among them, the strength pre prevails. Look at the countries, the strong country really prevails, oppresses the small countries, oppresses the weak countries. The strong man oppresses his servants, oppresses his slaves, the manager with his prestige, and he could be really unjust to his people. Okay? Unfortunately, this is this is the life we are in. Okay? 
and tell me if you can really come up with somebody in the world, okay, in the history, whether it's a recent history or an old history, who really possesses those three things. Very difficult to come up with some, somebody. But our religion, our faith, our Sahaba, yes. Can you repeat the three tables again? Yeah, the three of them is strength, al which is truth, and just, justice, to be just. To possess the three of them. It, of course, we're all dreaming to have all of those things, but it will be a very big mission, and it's going to be very big accountability on us to persuade it. Okay? So if we really look in our history, you know, in the history of our history, history of Islam, okay, 1,400 years ago, okay, yes, there were somebody like that. Yes, of course. There were somebody like that. Mm -hmm. Can anybody name one like that? Yes. Besides yes. Rasulullah yes. sallallahu yes. alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah <laughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who are Mustafa, we cannot approach Rasulullah because he is far away from being approached. Okay? We are trying to imitate him. We are trying to be close, as close as possible to his behavior. But I don't think we will ever be as good as he is. Can you name somebody? Omar ibn al-Khattab. Omar ibn al-Khattab. Anybody else? Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr. Okay. Yeah. Well, those are good role models. We are always Say. looking for to be Say. a Jama. <laughs> we, we read. We will try. We will try. Omar ibn Abdul Aziz. Omar Abdul Aziz. There are so many of them. So you all mentioned people from the Sahaba. So they are really good people. Really worth to be followed. Really to be imitated. Okay. Personally, for me, my favorite, my role model is Omar ibn Khattab. Radiallahu anhu arda. And that guy, really, you know, I mean, he possesses the three things and he executed the three things in a perfect manner. Victor, again, what is the three things? This is, you have to stop very much. Yeah, but now, yeah, doctor, it's so good subject to have to open it today. Allah. What is the three things? He said what? Power? Power? And just, haq, truth. And, and justice. Do you know, if somebody, three of them, they cannot come in one person. Except Omar ibn Khattab and anybody similar to him. Because when you have power, justice will disappear. This is what the doctor said. This is 100 percent Except Mar Rahim Rabb Taban. Why? Because most people, when they get power, they transgress. Right. Power transgress a That's why you cannot really, if you're not strong like Omar, Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, like this kind of Sahaba and Tabi'in, three of them, they cannot work together. Right. But it's difficult. You, it's see, difficult. you see, all power with justice. Yeah, you see, almost power and the haqq and justice are in the opposite direction. Yes. Okay. Yes. Never meet. Right. If the haqq, if haqq really comes towards the, the towards the power, that's fine. But otherwise, the haqq, the power is always prevails. Always yes. prevails. Yes. Okay. Yes. If we get that opportunity, we may like you know be the same. May not be what? No, we may be the same if and we get the same. Yeah. Then no, I don't think so. Yeah. It's not yeah. easy, Allah. Yeah. It's yeah. very yeah. difficult. When you are in the position yeah. and you get the power, this going to change. Believe me. It's if you have to have a strong Imam like Omar, yeah, it's not easy. When you have power and position, you're going to be a different person. Don't think you say yes because you're sitting in the masjid, you have some Imam now. It but is. when you come to the position and the power, Nobody can talk to you. You don't talk to anybody. Unintentionally, when you find yourself in a big position, a big prestige, yes. unintentionally, you can look down to something. Exactly. Unintentionally. Yes, you don't really mean it, but that, that your circumstances, you know, will will direct you towards that. Right. Omar ibn al-Khattab just violates that rule. <laughs> he really combined all of those three beautiful characters. Yes. Okay. And... That's why we love him. Do you know where? That's what. Yes. Amr al-Khattab, he used to put somebody, his name was Ka'b al-Ahbar. He was a Jewish man and he became Muslim, scholar. All the time he used to tell him, Ka'b, when Amr al-Khattab used to see himself like Omar, the leader of the Mu'mineen, power. And during his time, 
The Muslim Ummah, they were controlling the earth. Yes, more than 75% of the earth under the hand of Omar al-Khattab. And they used to say, Ya Ka'b al-Ahbar, remind me. And the Rasulullah sallallahu he told him, Omar, kafa bil mawt wa'idhan ya Omar. Rasulullah, he knew Omar going to be somebody. He said, kafa bil mawt wa'idhan, don't forget death, ya Omar. And Sayyidina Omar himself, he used to count himself every day. And he used to say to himself like that, to put himself down. One time, one Sahabi, I am coming to that. Would, 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 would it, excuse me for the interruption. Okay. I mean, Doctor said is actually supplementing my my talk. Okay, it makes it more beautiful. Okay, but we can talk about Omar al Khattab for hours and hours, yeah. and Thanks. we will never give him his what he really deserves. Okay, but despite that, he combined all those three characteristics. He was so humble. Yeah. Okay. Amir al-Mu'mineen, Aba Hafs, Al-Faruq. What are beautiful names somebody like that he got. Okay? But he was so humble. So to make it short today, I'm going to give you some examples, some exemplary things from his life to show his strengths, his just, and his attachment to Al-Haq. Okay? But before I do that, let me give you something about how humble he was. In his position, he's the leader of almost like what Dr. Said said, 75% of the world at that time. Okay. One time he went to the mosque and he called everybody, as salatu jami'ah. When the people at that time here, as salatu jami'ah, they come and rush, something important is going to be said. An imam is going to tell us something really important, so they are all ears to listen to that. So he stepped up on the podium, okay, and he started saying uh, to Musalliyin, okay, you know you guys, okay, Kuntu Fidderman Fizzaman al Madi. In the past, I was when I was a little boy and a young person, I used to go to the families and the old women and they clean their homes and milk their cows and their sheep and clean underneath them okay and spend all day such small bad jobs okay just to give me a few 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 uh, dates, dates. Okay. just a few dates. dates okay so don't look at me the way i am right now but i'm telling you about that's my history you know and so don't really be uh, you know be surprised and then he stepped down. Okay, that's all what he said. So Ali ibn Abi Talib told him, Oh ya Amir al Mu'mineen, ma arraka illa annak ahanta nafsak. Ahanta nafsak. You really, you really despised yourself. You really, you know, criticized yourself and you made yourself image is really bad. He said, That's ya Ali exactly what I wanted. Okay? Haddasatni nafsi. One time I was between me and myself and just said, Oh, I am Amir Mu'mineen, I could do this and this and this, but I better remember who I am, yes. who I was. So that's how, how humble, that was the greatest man at that time. Humiliation. Yes, yes. Anyway, so he really humiliated himself, okay? So let me give you just, there are so many examples, okay? So we're gonna go, we're gonna go an example with Qawr, okay? And then Rahma, and then another example for Ma'ak. Okay, let's see the core. Okay, at that time, okay, seventy-five percent of the world were under his control, under his rule. Okay, who's ruling the whole thing? Ashram, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan was under his control. Okay, Al Iraq was under his control. Egypt was under his control, and Amr ibn Al-As was there. Yeah. And, um. and and Iran and expanded all his kingdom. Okay. All the way, probably he reached south of Russia as as Berijan or as Rebijan, whatever it is. I don't know how to pronounce it. Okay, so that shows you about his kingdom. See, he was a ruler. His word was heard among all of those things. Nobody could really stand against him. Malikul force, Herak, Malikul force, Kisra 
وملك الروم هرا ونيفر ذي هير هيز نيم اور ذي نو اني ثينج ابوت ان ذي ترمبل ذي شيك ذي ار افريد ذيس از ذا جاي هو ريلي از كان يو نو اي مين هيز رولينج اول اوف ذوس ثينجز اوكي سو ذاتس هاو باورفول هي واز اوكي ذاتس هاو باورفول هي واز سو ليتس تيك ليتس تيك ان اكزامبل ابوت هيز ميرسي ذاتس ذاتس الرحمه الرحمه هيز ميرسي One time, which is among many times, Omar ibn Khattab used to go at night, walking in at night, and just, you say, يتحسس الناس. Means that just going and looking for his people. Somebody is crying, somebody is heavy, somebody is sick, somebody is, uh, you know, uh, he needs something, somebody has a problem. And he didn't do that only one night, he did it every night, just to go to see his people, how they are doing. So one time, from far away, he, he saw, you know, fire. So a fire, okay, so he approached it. He had his servant with him. I think his name was uh, uh, Nafa. <coughs> Yarfa. <coughs> Yarfa, I think. Yarfa or Nafa. Okay, he was his servant. So he approached the fire, okay, and he approached it just to say, uh, and he's talking to the people of the fire, okay, but he didn't say, Good night, the people of the fire. He said, Good night. Ya Ahl al Daw. Ya Ahl al Daw. See, Ya people of light. He didn't see how polite he is. He didn't say, Good night, or, or hi, or hello, or whatever it is. Of course, we're not going to say that. Assalamu alaikum, Ya Ahl al Daw. People of light. A Daw is much better than fire. <coughs> yeah. So, he, what he found, he found. He found one lady, old lady, sitting, and she had her kids are crying, and crying, and crying, and she had a pot, and she's boiling water on it, and the, the, the kids are crying. So he had told her, "Why are your kids crying?" Well, she said, "Well, I mean, we don't have any food, and I, and you know they are, they are hungry. I don't know what to do." She said, "Well, how about the, the pot? Don't you, aren't you cooking something in this pot?" She said. No, this is just water. I'm just keeping them quiet. I'm just fooling them. Mm -hmm. They might think that there's food. So maybe they will go to sleep. Camouflage. Oh, God. I mean, he really felt so sorry. And he ran, ran. And his servant behind him, running, 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 went back to the Baitun Mel. Mm -hmm. OK? And he got some wheat and some uh, food <laughs> and, and, and flour and everything and he carried it by himself okay and he went back and said and his servant yeah Amir Mumuni let me carry it instead of you you don't have to he said no 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 who's gonna carry it for me when day of judgment before God you know I'm gonna be asked about that and he ran over there and he started cooking the foods for the kids and he gave it to Kid and the kids were really happy. And he was cooking it instead of going and starving, you know, and doing and struggling and, you know, putting the fire, you know, on and everything. And the lady told him, Oh, she didn't really know that he's Amir al Mumini. Oh, oh, really? You are much better than Amir al Mumini. You are much better than Amir al Mumini. Yeah. She said right. that I wish our Amir al Mumini was it like would be you. Like, like that, okay? So he told her, okay, yeah, 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 Imra, tomorrow, inshallah, okay, come and see me in Fibayt, 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 Amir al-Mumini. Maybe you will find me there. Okay, so that's how, 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 how Rahim is, okay. Rahim in doing that, Rahim in saying the good word, Ya Ahl al rather than Ya Ahl al-Nar and stuff like that. So let's take one about Al-Ad, about how justice he was. It's a, it's a story also. Those are all stories, and I, I believe they are really true, okay? Uh, I'm sure they are in the Sira, okay, in the Sira. And, uh, and uh, probably he has so many uh, in, uh, events with Rasulullah, of course, okay? But let's talk about one, one example about his justice, okay? And then we're going to finish by this, okay? About his justice, okay? Uh, in Egypt, okay, in Egypt, one time they have like, usually they have 
yearly, yearly carnival festivals. Okay, where people, you know, go racing and stuff like that. And horses were much, was much, was very popular at that time. So they had a horse, you know, horse race. Okay, and the Egypt, you know, that has Muslims and Shias, it has Copts also, Christians and stuff like that. So they they started the the, the race. Okay. And you know races and getting the the semi final and the quarter final and the final and the final became between two two people two people who are those two people one cop the guy Christian with his horse and the other one was the son of Amr ibn al As Amr ibn al As was the ruler of Egypt at that time okay so the final was between both of them okay and they started the racing and whose horses won the horse of the Christian person. He won. And the other guy, the son of Omar ibn al-As, got so mad and he just got a stick and started hitting that guy. How come you you win? How come your horses win? Don't you know who I am? I am Ibn al -Akramin. And the guy just, you know, he didn't couldn't do anything. He's the son of the ruler. Okay? And but the guy wants really, really he wants to convey that to Amir So he knows that Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar ibn al-Khattab is a just guy, and if he, if he explained that story to him, he will get, will get his, his right. So he went from Egypt to al Medina, okay, where Umar, Umar, Umar ibn al-Khattab is there, and he complained about him. Umar al-Khattab got so angry, okay, and he sent a letter right away, okay, to Egypt, to Umar ibn al -As. Come Straight and bring your son. Both. What did he say in the letter? Huh? What did he say in the letter? From Amr ibn Khattab, Amir al Mu'mayn, ila al Asib ibn Asib. 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 To the son of the, the, the disobedient, the son of the disobedient. Son of the disobedient. <laughs> <laughs> when your letter, my letter comes to you, send my son. Yes. Yes. Ila al Asib ibn Asib. Yes. They both came. They both came. Ila al Asib ibn Asib. So they both came in, okay, and sat down in front of Amir Mu'minin, and Amir Mu'minin told Ibn al -As, okay, take that stick and hit him back. Okay, so he did that. He told the Coptic. Yeah, he told the yeah the Coptic guy, yeah. the one who the one who was oppressed, the one yeah, who, was, yeah. who was beaten. Okay, yes. take the stick and and beat him. Beat Ibn al -Akramin. Beat Ibn al -Akramin. Okay, so he did that, and then, you know, he said, "You're happy." He said, "I am happy. I already, I, I, I took, I took my right." Okay, and he thanked him, and he said, "No, wait a minute. Okay, just also take the stick and hit the last <laughs> for his father." Amr ibn al Father. So he said, he said, "Why Amir al-Mu'minin? He uh, uh, Amr ibn al didn't do anything. It's his son." He said, well, he did that because of the prestige and position of his father. Yes, yes, yes. Otherwise, he wouldn't do it. Yes, that's right. On his bald head. So he took his cap and he started hating him. Okay, so he really doesn't really distinguish between Christian or Jews or Muslim. Whoever has the right, he will give that's him his this, right. That's that's right. Yeah. So what, what, is, what, what can we be, what is the conclusion from all what I'm saying that we really have to be just, at least just, just among your family. Just with, be just with your wife, with your kids, just with your employees if you are <coughs> okay. Especially when you get power. Yes. Because when you have power, you're going to be a different person. If you're weak, maybe you will say, Allah, Karbana. But when you get power, this is different, completely different. I saw that last week in social media. Doctor just remind me about something. That Egyptian young boy who was making karate, racing with Kuwaiti, in Kuwait, they live in Kuwait. The Egyptian young boy, he beat up the, the he took the, the, he won, the Kuwaiti young boy. And the boys, kids, they hug each other. But I saw it in YouTube, what happened is the father of the one who lose, he came to the boy, the Egyptian boy, and he slapped his face in front of everybody. I said, what is this? What is this stupidity of Bedouin people? They are big one. Yani Sarah. Yani Egyptian cannot do that to the Kuwaiti if he doesn't he's a Kuwait. Why? The kids, they are kids. Making karate, whatever. 
and he won your son. Why you go and hit him, stab his face, and they throw him in this? You remind me just about the story. And subhanAllah, it's just last week. It is in social media. Maybe because he thinks it's better, he has the power, he has the money, so... Well, yes, yes. but this is, this is the idea. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make sense for me. When you have all the means in your hand, okay, still be just... Some people just now, they still have that mentality. We are better than anybody else. Uh, that created me from gold, they are from iron, from a uh, yeah. But I'm better than, it's not like that. You're not better than anybody. Whatever, if you have power, money, whatever. Yeah. One day, all this way, the 600,000 people, like the street in India, or the street in uh, the Quran Cairo, all Kuwait. Yani, one day, Saddam Hussein take it. And the one who freed the Egyptian yeah. army. You know, don't forget this. Who are you? Yani, it's just some uh, big one. Yani. Well, Masarah, yani. Sometimes it's too much. لا 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 محمود عليه. It's too much. People now they are stupid. صراحة. They have no justice when they have power. Money is power, and the gas is power, and this power they think are better than anybody. There is no prestige. Slap his face. That's it. Sit down. You respect. So any any. I was having a thought. Muhammad Aslam warned us from two things: from the power, because people most likely would change, and also another fitna or temptation is a woman also. So this is big stupid right? Power and woman. Right? Wallahi, yeah, excuse me. This is, do you know Mahmoud and Matt not because of the Egyptian? When you see Indian Indian worker working in Dubai or working in, in, in Gulf area, you see that Egyptian working in Jordan and last year also some Jordanian Aqaba, he was beating that Egyptian guy. And the last two, last year, like three people in Egypt, they've been killed by Kuwaitis or by Saudis. What is this? What do you think who you are? You know? What do you think who you are? This is not right. That's why when we talk about power and justice, they will never come to up, would come together in the same way nowadays. You know, why people humiliating people? Why? Because you have power? Because he's miskin? He wanna work? He's not begging you. He's doing certain job, he's taking his salary. That's it. Power. We did not consider it like this way. Power and justice are oxymoron. Yeah, I will have to touch it. It's a very important topic. Yes. Well, yeah. It is not just talking. The, the two characters are oxymoron. They call them oxymoron. Yes. That means that you they never meet. Link it. Link it nowadays. You can see different, different characters, they different don't. people. Okay. So anyway, anybody has any questions or comments or, you know, any whatever? I said my comment already. If the people understand the hadith of Prophet Muhammad is our first, he said, it's probably da'wah to Muslim, but it's not between him and Allah Hijab, even if he's a kafir. So if uh, oppressed anyone, even if he's not a believer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer his prayer. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so when you wish for power, please, or ask God for power, ask him also to be just. So yeah. you might get both of them, and you will be as good as you can. Want to hear from the middle? Any, any, any comments or any question? Or would you like, uh, would you like me to continue no, okay. about the subject and give you other example next time, maybe? Yes, it is. Inshallah. One thing over here is very uh, clear that, uh, you know, Umar, rather than who he actually hide his all, uh, you know, fame, his positions, and all of those things to approach the normal people, general people. And overall, we can see his character is like a simple human being. That's, 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 that's all, all from A to Z. Unless the lady next day, you know, she found out, oh, this is Umar. Yes. And up to that point, he just act like a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, that's true. That's the instruction. That's, that's, about, that's about his humbleness. And probably that could be another topic we can talk Doctor, about. Doctor, next week you can shut up and see Umar. Okay. Yeah. So who, wants to, be, Umar who wants to be like Umar? He has question. Lam has question. No. He's not a soft guy. He is strong in the heart. He's not. He's still. Umar al Khattab. He had two lines. And he says out of his tears yeah, and the oh, cry. Oh, yeah. It was very soft, Sheikh. Yeah. No. Yeah, we can, we it was, can it was a strong and yeah. hot. But yeah, it was very soft. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, right. Don't forget, what is your uh, comment? Well, I just want to make a comment. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, we, just, we look at it in a big, uh, in a micro, uh, macro this thing. It, it starts even from where you are. Yeah. In your own household. In your own household. Power and just. If you are the man, they consider it to be the end of the household. If you cannot be just between your kids, or be just when your wife is doing something wrong and say, well, you know, this is family, I have to protect family. Instead of letting your wife know, the, the worst thing she can do is to pack her load and leave you and say that. You what say, about if you have two wives because of the Well, that, that's where the problem it's, comes it's in. You know. Are you willing to get two wives? Well, look, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's because, listen, I can say, they know if you're not dealing just in this one day, when you're talking to Mahmoud, look at me. Answer, answer the question. Listen, it's something that is for me to answer the question. Answer the question, so please. Answer the question. I'm just answering the question. If it's against the law in this country, we don't try to do it. I mean, even though uh, we were won by our Prophet, Salah, we, we don't have to worship the authority, but we still have to make sure that, you know, we uh, adhere to some of the uh, rules and regulations that they lay down. So it's against the law in this country. You cannot have two wives in this country. That's the problem. I but know, I'm talking about Islam. Ah, uh, okay. In, in Islam, I can take it to the form. I, I'm, not, I'm not afraid. You know what Rasulullah said? Yes. If you have to, if you have two wives, you're not dealing justly between them, one of your shoulders will, will not be straight and left. You're going to see people walking like this. One up, one shoulder, another one is down like this. In the day of judgment, if you see anybody walking like this, means he had two wives and he was not dealing just between them. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what Rasulullah said in the hadith. So you have to deal justly between your uh, you know, just, wives. Just, just to put one thing, you know, I'm not going to mention it. Right here in Los Angeles, there's a case where there's a mosque. I'm not going to mention that mosque. Yeah. I come there, I pray and everything. And uh, we go out, uh, we go out to do, uh, going like take leave, uh, doing things like that. But I notice I've been going before, and then uh, you know every time, every time when we go out, it's like, uh, yeah, we have uh, somebody who is leading us, right? But I ask myself, why would I continue to go with a group where I have to be built? Like somebody who is deaf, and I mean, uh, they don't ask you. Okay, what do you? We are going to go and do something. What do you think? Yes. Uh, I mean, you don't know what kind of knowledge I have too. Uh, right. And I see some things. You know, there was a time we went to LA. Yes. We went to one brother's uh, store. He's selling alcohol, but don't go there and go and bash him, tell him you're going to hellfire because you're selling so what, alcohol. Are you, what, we are trying to get this brother to leave yeah. the store. Yeah. to come to masjid, because that's the message you always leave behind. Yeah. Come to masjid, please, brother. But when you begin to criticize him about alcohol, the guy, the guy pull out a, 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 a spray in a bottle. He said, if you don't leave my uh, stop, I will spray you. I don't know what the guy get in your bottle. And, you know, you, we were being told, you cannot tell the Amir anything. Then I confronted him. Oh, yeah. I mean, my, Amir, nature, right? my nature is not to be quiet. I told the Amir, I said, look, listen. I know this is my last time I'm going with you. <laughs> You're not going to allow me to go anymore. I think I think you are wrong. The way you so 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 you know. so, so, you, so you are not mute. You spoke. I, know, up. I spoke. I mean, I'm you have to, you have the to only thing you can do is to pull a gun in my head and blow it up. No, please. I will no. still talk. I will still talk. You can't do. I, I, the only thing I fear is your last part. Of that. Okay. You cannot. You cannot repress me. You cannot. I mean, I was. I was in the midst of my government. I was in the midst of government. You have a question, Abraid? Abraid, what, what's your question, Abraid? So, but I was treated wrong, you know, because we went to his store. We are telling him to go to the market. He's going to have fire. We are trying to invite him to go to the market. He came back. He told us to leave. He said, leave. Don't leave now. Allah, 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 يا ربنا لك الحمد امين يا ربنا لك الحمد اللهم يا مالك الملك اللهم انا نسالك الامن والامان امين يا رب العالمين امين امين فرج سمنا ويسر امرنا امين يا رب العالمين وارحمنا برحمتك
اللهم انزع اللهم اجعل فينا النزعة العمرية اللهم اللهم حسن اخلاقنا اللهم قوينا واغل فينا العدل والرحمة والعين والصفاء ونجينا واهدينا الى ما تحب وما ترضى اللهم ارزقنا وبارك لنا في رزقنا امين يا رب العالمين الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه ان شاء الله تكون فيكم تاني ونكست سالفه ان شاء الله